Welcome, those of you that are tuned in now. We are so excited about the Word of God that we are going to be receiving on tonight. Let me tell you, on Sunday, we had an awesome time in the Lord. We uh, did ministry in the most unusual way, but it was a beautiful opportunity for women to come together and uh, share their testimonies, but at the same time, leave something that they've been carrying for all of their lives, in most cases, uh, on the altar so that God can deal with it, what he promised us he would do. So let me tell you, while you are using this opportunity now, before we uh, get in prayer, use this opportunity now to share this live stream. I'm telling you right now, you are going to want to make sure your brother, your sister is um, on the same wave as you. You you want them to catch this spiritual wave. So go ahead, share this live stream now, and also put in a comment section that I am here. I am ready to receive from the Lord. Let's go together in prayer. Father, we come before your presence. God is humble as we know how. We thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. God, we thank you, Lord, for your peace. We thank you, Father God, because we know that there is none like you. We pray now, Father God, that you're going to change hearts and minds on this evening. We pray now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that there is something that still needs to be cleansed, God, that we need to be cleansed from, Father. So, God, right now, we lend our members to you, God. We pray that you would use our minds. You would use our hearts, God. You would use, God, this space that we are in, God, because we know that we cannot find the answers on our own, but we need you, Father, in this very moment, God, to cleanse us, to cover us, to purify us, to make us whole. We want to be holy because a God that we serve is holy. We pray now, Father, for those that are tuning in, those that are coming on in, God. Let them come in with a praise report. Let them come in in God rejoice and let them come in seeking let them come with their hearts and minds prepared and ready to receive and hear from you maybe something that they've never heard before God we pray now God that you're downloading that now God and father please be with the instructor on tonight God we thank you now for being a vessel used by you God not for our glory but for your glory only and it's in Jesus' name we pray amen amen so I see that we have some of our brothers and sisters joining in with us we are so excited about what God is doing at the altar as we've used this opportunity to go ahead and just take off all of those masks that we have been, you know, carrying all of those layers. And it wasn't feeling good when the layers had to be peeled off, but thank God, God exposed those things so that we have a better relationship with him so that we were more connected to him than we've ever been before. And so I'm excited about what God is going to do for each and every last one of you. Listen, we said that on last Sunday, what we were we're going to do is use the opportunity. We made declarations for about two and a half months where individuals, members were able to go and put the things that they have been struggling with on a piece of paper, rip it up and lay it at the altar. Uh, my husband and I, Pastor Corey and I, we have been praying over these particular declarations, these things that they are giving to God because they realize that they cannot handle it themselves. What am I talking about? Not just them, myself as well, Pastor Corey as well, we have actually put our issues that we've been carrying from for ever since childhood, we put it on that paper. And then once we did that, we ripped it up and we laid it at the altar. We covered it for those particular moments and we gave it to God. We didn't lay it at the altar. We left it at the altar. So with that being said, we had an opportunity um, where after praying over these declarations, now as we have promised, as Sister Tawana coined it, that we're not just going to tear it up, right? We're going to burn them things off. We're going to get rid of it. We're going to get rid of the root of the problem. We're going to burn them up. And so we were able to do just that. So let's use just a couple of moments to watch those things, the declarations that your brothers, your sisters, yourself have actually made and have given to God. So let's see this actually in action. the sacrifice you provide the spirit and I will open up the sky you provide the fire and I'll provide 
Say that again all over the room. We love you, Jesus. You provide the fire. God is so amazing. Um, I'm telling you, like, I get so much um, satisfaction in the fact that we have this opportunity where the things that we have been carrying for years, that there's such a great peace that when we leave those things to God, when we give them to him, because only he can do with those things that we can ourselves do. We don't have the mu- that much might. We don't have that much strength. We don't have that much power to be able to handle the things that he could handle. And I, I bless God for this opportunity to know that the thing that I've been struggling with, the thing that um, maybe hindered certain relationships, maybe hindered myself from um, walking into certain things that God would have allowed me to walk in. I thank God I get a great peace knowing that that thing was burned up. Let me tell you. And I tell you this, I know for a fact that the enemy, he's not happy about it at all, but I can we just rejoice with the Lord? Can we just clap our hands with what God is going to do. Come on. Can we make some noise? Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, God, for the opportunity, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I'm truly, truly excited about this, that you, my sister, you, my brother, those things have been ripped up. Those things have been burned up. And now I am ready. I am excited. I have a, such a type of peace that no man himself can take from me. So I am excited because even when the enemy comes and tries to whisper in your ear, tries to make, play mind games on you, you can be reminded of the fact that those things that you have placed on that paper have been burnt up. So that is no longer your problem. It's the Lord's problem. And so I dare you, I challenge you to use when the enemy comes to you, you say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. That's no longer my problem. That's no longer my issue, but it belongs to God. And I I, I, I try, I dare him to go to the Father and try God <laughs> with that thing. Amen. So we're going to get right into the word of God. Hallelujah. We're going to get right into the word of God again. We bless God for Pastor Corey, who is is um, not with us tonight. He has been doing such a great job uh, with preparing for the mask off. He's been preaching awesome, a dynamite word this entire season. Uh, And at the same time, he's been working behind the scenes, even when he's off. So we bless God for you, man of God. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate the virtue that is on your life and trust you uh, solely with our lives. Amen. As you're the leading shepherd, amen, at Alta Worship. Center. So we're going to get right into the word of God. We bless God for Sister Tawana. We thank God for Sister Katrina, Sister Katanya, Sister Mariah. We thank God for Sister Amy. We had five beautiful women. Let me tell you, I know many of you guys would just like to look at people's um, outer exterior, but when you have a beautiful spirit, 
Oh my God, that alone makes you powerful. And I just um, love their testimonies that they have shared. So my sister, I'm telling you, I'm so excited about what God is about to do in your life because once you have released something, we know the Lord is going to take you to the next level and we know the enemy is going to try you on that next level and going to bring another demon with him because he knows that you have gotten rid of that other demon that he thought he can trick you outside of your purpose. Hello? Come on, come on, come on. Y'all help me out here. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I see my amen. Amen's and uh, hallelujah. I see my amens coming in. Thank you. That lets me know that I am not alone. We are not alone. We're doing this thing together. And I bless God for the women because they use that opportunity to share, to be very vulnerable and transparent. Where do they do that at <laughs> in the house of God? They were very transparent. There were so many things that had came out that they had maybe never vocalized before, before people. And they use that opportunity to do that, to help you, even when they themselves didn't even even feel like they can even help themselves. So I bless God for them. We had Sister Amy talking about depression. And um, I tell you now, this is the season for the, September, the month of September. We are in suicide awareness. And so we know for a fact that that enemy is going to try some people. But I pray against it in the name of Jesus. They're going to try. He is going to try to trick somebody outside of their life purpose, outside of the promises that God has given them. They're going to make them feel like that they're less than. They don't deserve to be here. And I thank God because the woman of God opened up and gave that information, the depression. I mean, how she described it. She said how it made her feel, how she was. And it was almost as if you were in a dark place. And, and she felt like, you know, there's nobody that could, could actually help her in that moment. Not a spouse, not the children, not friends, not, not even sometimes in that moment. Not even you feel like God can even help you. I thank God for her sharing that opportunity, uh, sharing that spirit space right there to be very transparent with the things that she is dealing with and has dealt with and that sometimes every now and then comes up. I thank God for Sister Katanya being able to express openly um, her testimony, something that she had struggled with in the past, that she had been through in the past. And every now and then, because God has placed something and embedded something in her spirit today so that she can do something and for in the kingdom of God, the enemy tries to whisper in her ear and tell her she cannot do it and that she is worthless and she's not worthy enough to actually do something in the kingdom of God but I thank God because we served the enemy notice on a Sunday she was able to open it up <laughs> and now we know that we have God's backing because we trust God with everything that we say we had sister Tawana who gave an awesome testimony about being in a divorce um, having a divorce but being in a marriage for 10 years and still trying to make it work has anybody can attest with the woman of God have tried to make something work for years and years and years to the point where you begin to worship that thing because you just wanted to make it work because you want to please everybody on the outside from because everybody on the outside are looking at it from a different perspective and it's holding you to a certain standard and expectation and so you find yourself trying to um, live out those particular expectations of people we had Sister Katrina who gave her testimony about glorifying me and she she had she opened up and she said uh, there there were opportunity there were times when she um you know sought the gratification of men like not just men but anybody you know she became um in a sense men pleaser she wanted to please everybody that she was connected to to so much so that she denied herself as if she wasn't worthy enough to receive the great uh, promises that God has promised her. I'm telling you, it gets deep. It gets deep. We had Sister Mariah who also landed her testimony. She gave the fact that she had low self esteem. And what we see on the outside as a beautiful woman, she said, and she explained it and showed it up like this like, beauty is not just on the outside, it's on the inside as well. It's an internal thing. It's things that you internalize that you don't feel about yourself. So, where people may see something on the outside, you don't feel something on the inside. Side. So that lets me know that it's important for you to have self care on the inside, just as well, just as well on the outside. Okay, and then I ended up lending my testimony, my mother's testimony, um, something that I had witnessed as a child from a child's perspective on abuse, and how I was able to take those things that I had witnessed with my own eyes and I made them my own. So as a nine year old child coming up. 
in the faith, not even believing that God can do something with me because it didn't matter. All that mattered was that you would just get my mom outside of that abusive relationship. And that was enough for me. And I didn't even know that God can do something bigger. He can do something greater. I just wanted him to stop what I kept seeing every night because I had feared something um, big and something dangerous that we couldn't come back from. So I bless God for every woman of God that served as a panel on Sunday. They are so beautiful with what they shared. Let me tell you, as we walk on and journey over to our particular message, we spoke about let's talk deliverance. And what we know today is that there are so many people that are not talking about deliverance anymore. They're trying to, and we talked about this on Sunday, that they, um, us as believers, we would try to jump to the healing before the deliverance. And while we skip those steps, we oftentimes um, neglect ourselves from really receiving and experiencing God because many of us think that we're experiencing God, but we're not. We're actually walking in bitterness. And so we can't even see God, how God wants us to see him because all we have is that root of bitterness. Bitterness. And so we're going to go right there into the word of God, the focal scripture that we had. Amen. Sister Katanya. Amen. We are going to walk right into the word of God, Hebrews 12 and 15 and read, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. When we um, imagine, I think about, every time I think about the word bitterness, I always have to think about something that I've had that was very bitter and how it uh, gave me this weird type of facial expression. Anybody has ever had something very bitter that you couldn't even describe it? You just used that moment. You needed to pause. And I like using that example because many of us are actually walking and living a Christian life like that. We are walking around judging every situation. Um, it's the way we view the world around us. It's the way that we handle certain situations. It's the way that we operate, we move in life. It's the way we step back. It's, it's. I mean, telling you, bitterness uh, is so much so in the root. Like it's the root to all of the evil and all of the wickedness. And until we understand like the difference between um, or understanding evil and wickedness, then we won't really be able to get the deliverance because we need to know that there's a demonic force that's attached to everything, and sometimes um, holds on to an area of our lives. So that we cannot get the true liberation that we deserve. And so I use that example because um, when we think about bitterness, we think about um, how it allow it makes us feel like it makes us feel very resentful. Um, and in most cases, all of the women could attest that at most times we were very resentful. We um, had a, a certain type of anger um, because resentment and, and bitterness is all about what other people have done to you or against you. And sometimes, um, to be very truthful, sometimes it's not always what people have done to us, but it's something that we've imagined in our heads. And that was, that actually allows us to put that out into the atmosphere so that we can't even allow people to get close to us because we have already imagined in our head that, um, uh, from a place of hurt, because we're operating, bitterness is all about operating and um, in, in fear and in, in hurt and pain and what they did to me, what they think about me, how they view me, how they see me, um, how I see myself, what I've done to myself. So you have that place of bitterness um, and it, it also actually embodies um, every type of uh, a sharp and very unpleasant like uh, feeling. It makes you um, very cold um, to certain situations. That's why sometimes you may get connected to people and don't understand why they don't have any compassion, no sympathy, no empathy at all. Um, it's because they're out of touch with that feeling because of the root of bitterness. And when you think about a garden, um, you, and can anybody test it well, Talk with me tonight. I want you guys to talk with me tonight. Uh, this is an interactive Bible study. We're going to have a great time, good time, high time in the Lord. Um, talk with me. Have you been bitter before? What does that look like? What does it feel like? Talk with me tonight. But when we, we 
we think about that, um, you, you know, it's just it's so many, it's so often that we would uh, live our lives that way. And, uh, you know, what I've learned too, um, because I've been there before, it, it really does put you in a place where you, um, you literally imagine so many things, you make up stories in your head. <laughs> and so that's why we got to get to the root of it. Um, when you think about those that garden, the reason why I always go outside and I, um, outside there's this woman in front of her yard. She has a garden and she comes out every now and then and she cuts off different roots. And the reason why that is so important that I understand it, it makes sense at least that you would cut off these roots because if you don't cut off that bad root, everything stemming from it, it's going to be bad. And so if bitterness is the root to everything that you have been through, that you're going through and you've embodied that, listen, you need to cut off bitterness you need to el totally eliminate it you can't do it yourself but you need the power of God to eliminate everything that remains because everything that comes from you is going to be bitter everything that comes come from you is going to be bad and the reason why I say that is because a gardener the reason why she or he is going into that garden and cutting off that bad root is so that the rest of the plant it grows it gets the nourishment that it needs and that it deserves so that it can actually flourish into this beautiful plant that it had um, it, it expected to be um, so that you can get everything else that you want from it. So you got to cut off the bad root. We got to cut off the bad roots, my sisters, we, we, my brothers. We got to cut off these bad roots because everything that stems from it is going to be that, that bad thing. And no matter how many, how much good you try to find in it, no matter how much good people try to get from it, it's still going to produce that bad thing. The Bible reminds me, a little leaven leaven the whole lump. That means a little bit of that bad thing, that bad seed is going to spoil the, the entire thing. So this is why it's so important for us to do that. Amen. We have Pastor Corey. He says, uh, resentment makes a sweet person bitter. Indeed. Absolutely. Uh, the man of God is so right about that because when you think about um, resentment, you think about like this, this beautiful person. You grow up, you're excited, um, and then you have an experience that has happened to you, and now you're handling every, every situation. You're judging every situation by that experience that you have been through. And so this is why, man of God, you write that um, a, a great person, a beautiful a person, a sweet person, you know, the resentment can push you away. And at the end of it all, if God, um, if, if God is not there, I'm telling you, and we know this for a fact, and this came out on Sunday, that hatefulness and holiness cannot dwell in the same heart. It's either hate or or it's holiness. <laughs> so we, we really have to make sure, and I think we have been, as believers, have been fooling ourselves for years. We, we, we fool ourselves a lot, we, you know, because, you know, that's why the Bible teaches us to continue to be that, that self-examination, making sure that we're examining ourselves daily, because daily there might be things. Um, let me, I'll say this. There are some things that I have learned about myself and I was actually testifying to somebody uh, earlier today. I told them, I said, you know, um, before I was like, yeah, I love, you know, what makes you happy? I love everything about church. God is good. God is amazing. And he is indeed amazing. I love everything about him. Um, and I, but I was fooling myself for years that in that um, that was the only thing that I enjoy doing. Like going to church is the only thing I enjoy doing. Like I'm happy. You know, I was fooling myself for years because once I got married, I'm like, listen, let, I want to talk about some other things outside of church. <laughs> I want to talk about some other things. Um, but I, I say that to say that many a times because it sounds right or because everybody else is doing it or because everybody says this is the way to, it should happen or it should be flowing, you know, you'll have this one track mindset. And that's what bitterness and resentment does. It, not to say that that was the thing that made me bitter or nothing like that, but I'm just saying, like, you will fool yourself. That's what, you know, the enemy, he's a slickster. He'll make you believe something so that you'll be on the other side, you'll be missing everything. Everything that God is trying to show you because you have this one track um, mindset. Amen. Amen. You guys talking to me? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sister Amy said, I am sick and tired of being bitter. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is a blessing. You know why? Because we got to get to a point 
where we are sick and tired because it's only when we're sick and tired that we start making decisions, you know, about our life. You got to get sick and tired of being one way so that you can change your entire lifestyle around. Come on, Sister Amy, preaching all over again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so what we know about the root of bitterness, the seed, it's always um, planted in someone because the cause of it is because of hurt. They feel like they've been hurt. We feel like we've been hurt by something or we have indeed been hurt by something. And so that's why it's important for us to understand that whether or not the hurt came intentionally or unintentionally, um, at some point it still goes back to the offense. And if we're always holding offense um, against people, we'd leave no room for God to show up in our life because our lives will be then in that case full of the offenses that people have done. And what I have learned in uh, my maturity walk and journey with the Lord is that sometimes you get upset and disturbed at people who don't even know they have the issue to begin with. And this is why not only the hurt that you receive from the people, it's part of your responsibility, but you have the an accountability from God. Those that are mature, those that know God, those that read the word, those that are receiving the word. And if you go into the house of God on Sundays and Tuesdays in Bible study, you are receiving the word. <laughs> so we have to get to the place where we understand that we also have the accountability to one, teach people how to treat us. And then at the same time, with whether or not they'll receive from us, it's also not to um, internalize it in a way where it actually um, dims our light because we're the light of the world if we are offended about everything and anything we cannot get to the next expansion that God wants us to see and get because that means on the next level you're going to deal with greater demons and if you can't deal with the, the demons that are on the level that you are on today right now don't think that God is going to give you that million dollars or um, have that um, CEO mindset or give you that um, corner office, you know, a mindset. I'm just throwing some things out there, some things that you might want, you know. He's not going to give you those things because you're not going to, you don't even know how to deal with the demons now. If you think you're de dealing with demons now, let me tell you, I, Apostle Wells has always taught us that on every level, there is a demon. So we're going to have to make sure that we are ready and that we deal with this demon now because this next level is going to, they're going to be greater demons. Amen. Can I get an amen for that? <laughs> Amen. So what we understand about the Lord is that um, the soul, um, one thing that the Lord will remind us in our self-examination is that also that the soul of bitterness is a heart that harbors um, hostility and it does not want to deal with the hurts, the hurt at all. It doesn't want to allow the grace of God to deal with it because they want to hold on to something. It's something about the control thing. It makes you feel like you were in control if you could exit, exit people out of your lives. Um, one of the things that the man of God has taught me, Apostle Wells has taught me is that, listen, you got to get to a place. And he's told me this early on in life in my Christian walk with Christ is that we are the repairs, repairs of the breach. And so we always are have to, having to be in the position where we are teaching people. And while we're in that position of teaching people, that we also understand that as being a repair, sometimes it's not going to always feel good to you how they treat you, but you are strong enough to be able to repair that thing and so I bless God for that because I take that with me in every situation I literally use that as um, a, a starting mark of how I'm going to deal with the situation and move forward from there but again we're talking about bitterness right now because we know that uh, bitterness it grows deeper I mean it's a it's, it's a deep thing it, it really is as we mentioned before and earlier that it literally is um, going to be the root to how we view the life around us and so um, those bitter people oftentimes they criticize everything this is how you're able to decipher if you are bitter or not or because by the Lord has given us the ability to judge others as well now you have the ability to see those people around you who are bitter those people who are bitter they often criticize um, you or criticize um, you may criticize people all the time just so that you can justify your own wrong and um, this is why this is important 
important because as we go back to the scripture that we had read and we opened up initially is that if you if you don't address those things if you don't eliminate that then that's literally how we are going to deal with God's people this is how we're going to deal with the promises that he gives us and so that's why it's important for us to not walk into this hypocritical hypocritical view of um of everything that we view the world around us. Uh, do we have any questions right now? Amen. And one thing that we know about bitter people is that they know how to push some buttons. Hello? <laughs> bitter people knows how to push your buttons. And the reason why they know how to do it, not to say that they studied it, they become those type of people where they learn how to push your buttons so that they can then they can then go ahead and judge you. Again, they're criticizing you. They're now in this position where they're hypocritical. So they're going to say, justify everything that they are doing because you are doing it. They're going to find fault in you. They're going to be those type of um, individuals. So that's why we're learning two things tonight, that if I find myself in that position where I am bitter because I'm judging everything around me, I'm judging, judging everybody else, I'm trying to um, make sure that my wrong you know, is hidden or put to the side because what we know about bitter people is that people wouldn't often, um, uh, they would often deny that. They would disguise the fact. They won't act often admit that they are, in fact, bitter um, for those that are in that particular state. So this is how we know, like, they camouflage um, who they are because they're hiding behind the true thing that they are actually going through. And so you can only suppress that thing for so long. Like, eventually, that hate is going to come out of you. Eventually, um, that criticism is going to come out of you. Eventually, hypocritical is going to come out of you. E eventually, all of those things are going to come out, and you're going to be exposed. Um, and those people are going to be exposed at the same time because it cannot hide itself from holiness. Some, come, somebody say hello. <laughs> you cannot, that part, you cannot hide. You cannot hide from the holiness. You cannot hide from the spirit of the Lord. You cannot hide from God. Because the Bible tells me that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is indeed what? He's Lord. So it does not matter what the enemy tries to do, the traps that he tries to set up for you. You know for a fact that that will not be, it's going to eventually be exposed so even if bitterness is in you eventually that thing is going to be exposed because you desire God we desire the Lord to come and consume us and so if that is the case he's going to expose those things because he knows that in order for us to get to the next step in him and to actually become closer to him he's going to have to cut off the root so everything in you that remains has to be cut off amen we have uh sister Trini says they they will make you feel like you, you oh like you are the bitter per person and that it's your fault that is so true come on sister katrina we also have brother uh deacon spurgeon on the line he says it's so important that we examine ourselves daily so we don't affect others oh my goodness that is a word all in itself because um, we affect people in so many ways and bitterness what happens is if we do not deal with bitterness and we do not cut off that root, instead of us giving love, the love is going to be tainted. The love of God is going to be tainted. So instead of us giving love, we'll be giving bitterness. And now you're actually sending out a false representation of who God is because it's tainted by the bitterness. And that's why, and I want to apologize on behalf of the church, on behalf of preachers, on behalf of, you know, uh, my brothers and sisters, I want to apologize apologize and repent for them because um, in most cases be, we're seeing a lot of that in Christendom where people are giving us a whole lot of them a whole lot of their own experiences that they've been through and judging every experience by the experiences that they've had uh, and so now instead of them giving out love and, and compassion they're giving out bitterness and judging and hypocritical and criticism and justification we're giving out all of those things instead of the love of God so those things that God would allow us to have those things are actually tainted by our own experiences that we have been through in life so absolutely we have to definitely definitely put ourselves into a position where we are doing that where we are examining ourselves because when we think about it 
bitterness, um, it affects every area of our life. I mean, I'm telling you, like the woman of God, Sister Amy, was talking about depression. And um, we wonder how does a person, how does um, uh, someone who's saved, how does someone who knows God, how does someone who loves God, how, how does someone who prays to God, how does someone who goes to church, uh, how does someone who says that they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they are filled with the Holy Ghost, they're speaking in tongues, they have the evidence, how does somebody like that um, be put into a position where they're dealing with depression or they're dealing with a divorce or they're dealing with low self-esteem? Well, how does when, how does a person get through that when they have all these things? And so what we can understand by that is that bitterness, indeed, it affects all areas of our life. It affects us spiritually. It affects us physically. It affects us emotionally. And so it, it will literally consume our life. Man, and the reason why these people who are Holy Ghost feel can actually um, still have demons um, attack them is because that there's a um, there's a need for deliverance. And all of us think that we can handle it by ourselves. There was a reason why God wanted us to, the Bible says, failure not to assemble yourselves one with another. There's a reason why God taught us that we need to confess our fault one with another. Like there's a reason why God wanted us to be together, be in fellowship with our brothers and sisters, because the Bible teaches us those which are spiritual will restore. So we need more spiritual people in the house of God, because at some point in our journey, we are going to get weak. We're going to fall um, short of the glory of God. There, It's bound to happen. That's why two is better than one. But there, there's no need to have two if both people are weak because that other person cannot restore the person. So you got to find you a strong person, someone who's in the army of the Lord, someone who says, for God I live, for God I die, for those that are considered to be um, th those that honor God, those that worship God. And there's something that I understand about the enemy. One thing that he hates, one thing that he despises, one thing that he he cannot stand is that he cannot stand the presence of God. Somebody come on and say hello. Amen. I feel like Pastor Corey tonight. Hallelujah. I just feel like I need to go ahead and get some claps right there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. This is true. Very, very, very much so true because there are times where if you are worshiping God, if you're praying, if you're always in his presence, he cannot stand it. He hates it. The enemy hates that. And so while he is trying to affect every area of uh, our lives, this is how we know that it is important for us to get rid of those root. On Sunday, I talked about it. In order for us to actually get rid of the root, we have to first allow God to do it. We have to ha allow God to expose it. Because we think that, um, like I mentioned before, there are some people that would just not admit that they are bitter. And um, nobody wants to. It makes us look bad. It makes us feel bad. So nobody wants to admit that. But one thing I can tell you is that the enemy, he does some he does some slick stuff. He would hide in certain crevices and areas of our lives. And as he's hiding, he's hitting himself. You'll be going to God about one thing when God is like, no, I need you to deal with this. I need you to deal with the bitterness because I cannot get any use out of you. And and there is no reason why God would want you to come to him if he's not going to use you. Why would he want you to come to him and he can't use you? It's like um, an investment. Jesus, he died on a cross for our sins. That was a total investment. He sacrificed his life. He put his life on the line. He even, he embared, uh, bared so much um, havoc, so much pain. He bared the cross alone. He bared like um, people talking about him, he bared, you know, get performing miracles before people and then turning around and telling those people not to say anything. But then they go back and tell somebody because in most cases they couldn't help it. They went back and told them how they were made whole, how they were uh, um, set free. They, he went, they went back and exposed those things. And so he had his very own people crucify him. He had people that walked with him, that knew what he could do, that knew what his purpose was on earth. He had all of that, but not one time did God flow in the spirit of bitterness after being actually witnessing it with the, with our own eyes listen 
we get mad at people because we think about what they're doing to us. We think about that they're conspiring against us. We get mad at those people. But can you imagine people doing things right in front of you, right in your face, and you can't do anything, but still your very best try to hold held your head up high because God had already shown you that this time was going to come. And so us, we cannot think it's strange. This is why I want us to understand so that we can mature in the faith so that we don't get to a place where we're so focused on the hurt that we miss miss the blessing that we miss the move that we miss the fact that we are, have now have come in covenant because if you are going through certain things and people are treating you certain types of ways they're making you feel like you're you're not important they're making you feel like you don't matter they're making you feel like they're that, that you're worthless and they've hurt your feelings they they rubbed you the wrong way or you don't feel like they did right by you or you didn't speak up enough to tell them how you feel so now you expect people to understand and 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 treat you how you want to be treated when you haven't vocalized it in the beginning because what I've learned too is that the reason why many of us as believers we have been to that and I have been there before you people treat you how you treat yourself if you don't value yourself if you don't love yourself people are going to engage with you how they see that you are treating yourself and that's how I know that we um, allow certain things in our lives allow the enemy to do certain things to us say certain things to us us. And when he does that, when the enemy slip those things into us, now that is an indication that you do not value yourself because you have allowed certain things, come on, certain people in your life. And so that shows us as spiritual people what you think about yourself. So it's time for us to change that. This is why we're getting to bitterness because we need to know that we have been harboring some things for too long and we are harboring those things to the point where they have become a part of our our entire being it's it's controlled us physically it's controlled us spiritually it's controlled us emotionally and so now when you get into your marriages now when you get into ministry now like the man of God mentioned now you're giving out that thing instead of giving out the love of God now you're giving out those things instead of giving out who God has created you to be and so this is why is it important for us to make sure that we let God reveal those things to us and let grace reveal it to us and the reason why we mentioned this on Sunday is because when we let God uh, reveal them to us now we can submit ourselves into a place where we understand that it is a privilege and an honor to even have God to even come to us and expose those things to us in a way that we would have never seen them before if God can show you the error of your ways man like that's enough to praise God for it because God don't speak to everybody. God doesn't minister to everybody. God doesn't, he doesn't, he turns some people away. I just thank God because even when I was doing it my way, God did not turn me over to a reprobated mind. And that's what I want us to, that's my biggest fear with the body of Christ. I don't want us to be preaching with a reprobated mind. I don't want us to be loving people with a reprobated mind. I don't want us to be singing, dancing, doing ministry with a reprobated mind. Because when we do that, the enemy wins. The enemy wins and the Bible shows me tells me that the enemy shall not have any victory and so we don't want to do that we don't want to turn people away from God we ourselves want to make sure that we're getting the full experience of God because I want to understand what does it mean to truly walk with Christ I want to know what that looks like I, I want to know what it feels like I want to know what it sounds like I want to know what it tastes like <laughs> I, I, I want those things I desire those things and because I desire those things I am surely going to make sure that I cut that root off. I have to literally get rid of it entirely. You can't even give the enemy any room to hold on to an area of your life that you have been through. It's almost as if like you, um, you know, those things, as we mentioned in terms of bitterness, they grow, you know, they don't, they don't just, um, um, be there and that's it. No, they grow, they fester. And now the bitterness, it becomes a part of um, generations. Now the bitterness, if you don't cut it off, it becomes a part of your children's life. It becomes how you treat your children. It becomes how you treat your marriage. It becomes how you treat your um, your family. You, you know, it, it becomes how you treat ministry, how you treat God. I mean, all of that, like, it plays in a, a significant role in our walk with Christ. And that's why this is why it's important for us to cut 
off the bitterness. So somebody talk with me. Um, amen. I have my brothers and my sisters. I have my husband, uh, minister, babe. Amen. <laughs> Stop pushing me now. Um, praise God. But yeah, talk to me. You know, why are we so bitter? Why? Why are we so bitter? Talk with me. And while you guys are building up enough courage to put it in there, I'm going to go ahead and keep going. But what I will say is this, is that um, the reason why I truly believe that uh, we cannot, you know, really uh, we've been holding on so tightly with a really close, um, tight grip. The bitterness is because we've gotten to a place where resentment um, is literally like it, it, it has controlled us. It, it, there's no other way to it <laughs> but to believe that if you're literally operating your life, um, you know, and one of the things I will say this is that many of us have testimonies. And one of the things I love about the women of God that was that served as um, the panelists on Sunday, one of the things I love, and I was telling my husband this, I said, you know, one of the things I love about their testimonies is that not one person sat there and blamed anybody for anything. Like, they didn't say, um, that's how you know this is what true deliverance look like where it no longer becomes about the person, but it comes more so, it becomes more so about you. And I love what Sister Tawana mentioned when she gave her testimony. She said, listen, like, we don't do enough taking accountability for our own actions. You know, there were two of us that was in this. You know, I can't always look at what the other person has done, but what I have done. And you know what gives me grace, um, you know, about all of that is that I, I can't sit there and point the finger uh, with what everyone else has done to me, what they're doing to me, um, what it looked like in the past, how they resembled somebody else from my past. If I if I literally did that all day long, I will never I never leave God any room to deal with me. Because everything is about everybody else. So there is no really spiritual growth happening because it's always about what everybody else is doing. And I know I've noticed this into the house of God that a lot of people acknowledge what they're doing wrong, but they put someone else's problems, someone else's issues, someone else's things that they have done to them in a, a higher on a higher measurement stick than than their own. So the offenses that you have caused it's all right that's fine I'll find grace but someone else oh no they know they do not need to be close to me they don't need to be connected with me I'm not going to talk with them I am going to move forward come on that's a bunch of immaturity <laughs> we need to grow up from there because this is literally what children do but one of the things I love about babes because the bible teaches us this is that the little children they have they get in a place where if a, a sister I'll say this my niece who is nine years old She's going to fourth grade. She had this longtime friend. Her and this young little girl always gets into it. And it does not matter. Every year she's like, well, I hope we're in the same class. I'm like, that don't make sense to me. But I love that because the innocence there is so beautiful. It's almost as if, like, it it, it doesn't matter that she took my crayons. It doesn't matter that, you know, she didn't like me or she didn't sit with me at lunch. It's all about, well, we'll forgive and we'll move forward. Not this, not to say that they're actually vocalizing it or articulating it in that way, but that's what children do. They fight and then they, the next day they'll be playing. And I know parents get so frustrated, but you know, you said you don't like her. You said she did this. You said she always does this, but you still go back and you want to play with her. Um, but I love that because there's an innocence there. We need to get back to the innocence. Get back to that innocence. Amen. We have people speaking. Amen. Talk with us. Talk with us. Okay, so the question is, how can someone who's been hurt over and over trust God over what they are currently experiencing? Okay, man of God, that is beautiful. Beautiful question. Um, People who have been hurt over and over and over again, how can we get to a place where um, we trust God over what they're currently experiencing? Okay, we can get to that place by understanding how important forgiveness really is. So if we have forgiving, forgiven them for what they've done, one, one, one thing I will say is that God will give us wisdom. And the Bible teaches us that he will not allow us to be ignorant of the devil's devices. So if you are allowing somebody to repetitively hurt you over and over and over, you have not gotten to a place where you have taken on the responsibility that God has given you to protect your heart. 
you have a responsibility, you have a right, you will be held accountable. <laughs> you are going to be held accountable at the seat of judgment because you have the responsibility to protect your heart. Many times because we're so generous people, we give people our heart, our heart. We give it to it, we give it to them. But God says, oh, no, no. You walked yourself into that. It's like almost as if like I'm fornicating, right? You open yourself up to a side of vulnerability that, um, you know, you give them literally like your soul in a sense because there's an attachment there. You give them that. And so now it's difficult for you to protect your heart because you're so vulnerable. You're in a vulnerable state. So you're going to give that person everything. And so that's why that I don't mean to go there. I don't know why God is leading me there, but that's an example that I can use there because we have to get to a place that, after someone has hurt us, has hurt us, now we have to get to the place now that we cannot no longer, and the sister said this on Sunday, we can no longer allow those people, that person to be our God. Because if we have allowed them to be our God to where it, it takes us away from God, now we've just said, okay, well, God, I'm not going to trust you anymore because of what they have done to me. And that's not right because you know, the, the Bible even talks about the spirit doesn't strive a man always. It's not always with the man. <laughs> it's not always with that individual. So this is why it's important for us to get to a place that it doesn't matter. And you can take this approach, and this is what I do in my daily life. Like, it doesn't matter what they do to me. It doesn't matter if they're conspiring against me. It doesn't matter if they're talking about me. It, it, all that doesn't matter. I know God has me. If nobody else has me, God has me. I mean, my husband, too, he has to because he has an accountability. The blood would be required on his hand. <laughs> but <laughs> but God, if nobody else has you, God has you. So it doesn't matter. You can trust God. God has not given us anything or shown us anything in his word of God that will not happen. He's laid out a blueprint of things that was going to happen to us and uh, our other brothers and sisters, the disciples who've also experienced certain things. Um, they also like that's like the blueprint of what life is going to look like. They've all been talked about. They've all been said that they counted out. They've all had they had to experience people saying that they're nothing or because they were connected with Christ that this was going to happen or they were this way. Like, listen, all of us are going to experience something. We're all going to have to bear the cross. That's what makes us connected to him. If you don't want to go through anything, then uh, listen, you chose the wrong faith. <laughs> because we're going to go through some things. First of all, without God, you're still going to have life, but I would rather do life with God than to try to do it by myself or to try to do it with another God who, who will not hear from me. You hear me? Amen. That was a beautiful question. Thank you, Pastor Corey. Amen. So, um, amen. Sister Katrina, she says, I think we hold so much in us and we don't know how to let go to the point it pours out of us. Amen. So uh, I believe the woman of God is mentioning that we hold on to bitterness so much and we don't know how to let it go to so, so much so that it basically pours, it spills over and it controls us. It become, it overwhelms us in a way where, you know, now we're living life in skepticism. That is beautiful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We live life in skepticism because of the bitterness that has controlled us, that has consumed our life. Amen. Um, oh, yeah. Bitterness because um, if expectations were not met, feels like um, we wasted time. Mm -hmm, yeah. So we become... Uh, bitter because of the expectations when they are not met we feel like we have wasted our time okay that makes sense absolutely it, you know one one of the things I know and I love De Deacon Spurgeon because uh he, he's something else. I love his testimony too, but, um, he is so right. Sometimes we become bitter because we feel like we've been working with somebody for a long time or we've been helping them. We've been assisting them. We've been praying with them. We've been encouraging them. And then at some point you just get so frustrated because of the expectation. Let me tell you, I, Deacon Spurgeon, you are not the only one. I have been there before. <laughs> uh, let me tell you this. Um, you, even at, as pastors, we got to constantly pray because you can, 
you can obviously go through that. You're preaching the gospel and you're expecting people to grow, 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 or to change, 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 change. And your high expectations of them, it disappoints you. And so the reason why I want to make sure that I highlight that question is because I don't want us to walk into a place where we do become bitter because of our high expectations, because we can't be people. God does not expect us to have these type of high expectations of people every time. If you continue to put those expectations up, you're going to be disappointed every time, every time. So the, the beautiful thing about what I'm learning and that what I have learned and have adapted to is that do not set up high expectations for people, but to continue to see people how God sees them and God gives them grace. God extends the grace. At least we would hope that God would extend the, that they're not too far where we don't have that grace with them. But that does not mean that I want us to use wisdom because God gives it. Remember, he will not allow us to be ignorant of the devil devices. You can be helping somebody for so many years, so much time. And then when you're helping that person, just know that you lending all those resources, all those things to them, it may not change them. And so you have to use wisdom that God would say, oh, no, no more. Even God said, all right, get up. No, why are you praying for that brother? That, that, that's not, I'm not even hearing from him. I'm not, I'm not even moving in that area no more. I'm moving over here. So I'm trying to do something with you. You trying to, you know, go over there. So the only thing that we can do is just um, operate in love with individuals who have gotten to that place. Just continue to embrace them. Just continue to love. And I've been in certain situations where you've embraced someone so much and you've given love. You, you didn't give bitterness. We didn't give bitterness, but you've given love so much that that love turned that person around. That love calls deliverance. Now, remember, when we talk about deliverance, God does not expect us to just re want to receive the deliverance, but he also it calls and is calling us to actually be deliverers as well. And this, was, this is what I think um, the church miss out and forget about is that God has allowed us to be considered to be the Zion. Zion is, um, when you think about Zion and when the Bible describes it, it's, it is of deliverance. It is of change. It is of, uh, of promoting, um, you know, the well and holiness. Like, so that's what Zion is. And so if we're going, and it has authority, it causes authority. So if we're going to be the Zion, if we're going to be that church, if we're going to be Zion, our body, who we are, we're going to embody deliverance we're going to embody authority we're going to embody change we're going to embody all those things that zion is supposed to embody so because of that we're going to be giving out things love and all of that that's why it's important for that stuff to not taint your life experiences your bad mistakes your um your confusion your ability to not protect your heart you cannot give that out you can't spew that out because now you're going to be a false representation of what zion should look like amen amen let me get to the comments because i can i i love god's word amen um Yes, yeah, she said, amen, start the deliverance with yourself. Amen to that, Sister Tawana. Um, the woman of God is so right about that. We have to start first with us, first with us so that we can become the deliverer. And oftentimes we'd like to say uh, what everybody else is doing, how everyone is else got their own issues, but worry about you. <laughs> I'm telling you, Christendom will be so much better if we learn to 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 go to God and receive true deliverance from God so that we can be made whole, so that we can truly get to the healing that we deserve. Um, amen. Woman of God, my aunt's on the line. She says, God will give you what you need to protect your heart. Absolutely. Anything it is, he's going to he's going to minister to you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to um, give you the words. He's going to tell you how to in, uh, deal with that individual. Um, but we we. What we have to do is make sure that we're not holding on to things so tight to where God cannot move in those areas. So if you've held on to some things so tight, he can't remove the bitterness from the heart. You know, we have to literally let God in. Remember, we can trust God. You know, you can let God in because when he comes in, I'm telling you, he's going to minister to you while you are the way you are. He's going to minister to you while um, you have the, the low self-esteem, why you are in a place of depression or why, you, you know, this didn't work out. He'll minister some things to you. And I'm telling you, sometimes those things are not always pretty. It doesn't always sound good. Um, 
but God, I'm telling you, he is the, the best person to instruct you and to rebuke you and to chastise you at the same time because you know it's coming from a place of love when God does it. So amen. Thank you, amen, for our brothers and sisters that are chiming in. She says, uh, Sister Amy says, sometimes we don't protect our own heart because we don't want to hurt someone else. Ooh. Ooh, hallelujah. That is so very true. Again, that goes back to how we view ourselves, how we value ourselves, because we're going to, we're so concerned about protecting everybody else when we have not started first with us. And if you're not um, honest with yourself and honest with God, in all essence, you're not even giving out honesty before the people who you are trying to protect. And so I've learned that even with trying to protect other people, that also builds up another thing because when they fail you, when they disappoint you, now you are in a position where now you're protecting yourself and you become more angry with that person and you feel that that person has hurt you and there's other things that start coming up because remember the Bible tells us it goes back and gets seven more demons. So now this demon is more powerful and I'm da- that person right there is a dangerous person now because that seven more demons have come and who's to say what would happen in that particular state? Absolutely, woman of God. We have been there before. This is absolutely a amazing sister Amy that you are sharing this information because I have been there people have been there we become um we we become people who try to do God's work we try to protect people (laughs) we can't even protect our kids we don't even have the authority and the ability to even protect them they're still going to see certain things they're still going to experience their own things even when we try parents i know you don't want your siblings you don't want your children to go through certain things in life but they still got to go through it i still had to go through my own it didn't matter how many times mama tried to protect me and warn me for certain things i still find myself walking right into something that i wanted to try and taste and guess what happens god reminded me thank god i've I found god but thank god and that very very moment God began to in my adult life even now say oh this is why mama said what she said this is why she was telling you this this is why she was warning you there was a spirit of the Lord using her you know but all of the, even our children we we don't even have enough might to do that all we can do is pray I remember back in the day uh, we had grandmothers we had praying grandmothers you know this dispensation now, um, and I know they like to talk about the millenniums um, and what we like and what we don't like and who we are, but I tell you this, my prayer for uh, this dispensation now is that we get back to the place that where we go to the altar, where we are building an altar, not for ourselves, but we are building the altar for Christ, where Christ will get the glory, where we're giving things because we're going, into, going to this altar knowing that God can indeed handle it because there's a certain place that we have to be in when, we, when it relates to the altar. Like there's a certain type of... Um, sacred place that it is how the, it was treated like once you went into this place of worship and altering I mean at the altar this altar that was built you knew for a fact that God was going to meet you there you knew that anything that you need, needed you could left, leave it there back years ago and so even now like we have to get to that place where we are um, we see the altar as um, not just our church but shout out to altar worship center but the altar that we are building a secret closet um, closet that we go into to um, whatever it is we have to know that that's a sacred place and that is a privilege to be able to build something and give it to God and say God do with it what you will want to do with it whatever I'm allowed to put on here I will you know you can't be treating the altar any kind of way you can't be putting these things on the altar giving them to the Lord and trying to take them back that's why I say that um, I don't lay things at the altar I leave it at the altar because when you lay things at the altar you that shows me that you have the authority and the ability to pick it back up no you don't need that responsibility let God handle that that burden's too big for you honey you take that thing and you leave it at the altar leave it there left it and say I left it at the altar don't say I laid it down at the altar no I left it at the altar that means I can't even go back to get it because that's not my altar to get it from (laughs) amen amen praise God all right so let's go right into deliverance as we are about to wrap up here, I want us to understand that deliverance is so important to our daily walk with Christ because all of us, especially uh, leaders, um, but all of us are always under some sort of attack. And anybody who's under attack needs deliverance. And this is why 
Uh, deliverance is not just for the lay member. This is why deliverance is not just for the usher. It's not just for the drama. It's not just for the praise and worship leaders. It's not just for uh, the musicians. It's not just for the deacons. It's not just for the auxiliary leaders. It's not just for them. It's it's for the bishop. It's for the pastors. It's for the ministers. It's for the the clergy. It's it, literally it deliverance is for all of us. No one is exempt. We're always walking in a spirit of repentance. Meaning we're changing our mind about something all the time. When a person repent, we're changing our mind daily about certain things. That's what it means to repent. You change your mind and you turn away. Many of us haven't been repenting properly. And so that's why we have to understand that deliverance is so important to our walk with Christ because in deliverance, this is how we know that we are making sure and ensuring that we have that connection with God. As we have been mentioning throughout this entire Bible study, that if we do not get delivered from things, then we'll turn into people that are giving this representation of who we are because there's a whole lot of people in the body of Christ giving so much of them and not enough of Christ. And that's why the body of Christ, that's why the word of God, the gospel of the gospel, all of that has been tainted because we're swaying it. How from our own perspective, rather than what the word says, rather than what the spirit of the Lord has ministered to you to say it, we're giving so much of us and not enough of the Holy ghost. Come on. We give so much of us and not enough. And, and uh, we have to be very careful very careful with how we are handling God's people. So anybody who's ever under attack is supposed to be people who are always seeking deliverance. Amen. Amen. It looks like we have a, a question here in all situations, turn back to God for he is always there. People always say they are looking for God, but he left us even in our mess situation brings you closer to God. If you allow him to uh, get in worship, fall back in love. Amen. Deacon Spurgeon. Absolutely. That's a word right there. The man of God mentioned because we have to continue to go have that love walk with Christ. We need to know that we're in a covenant and how important that is with God. Amen to that. Thank you, man of God for that. Um, so be because you want to make sure we want to make sure ourselves that we're not giving out what has been given to us. It's, it's so important that we don't do that. We don't operate as believers who are giving out what has been given to us. Well, they hurt me, so I'm going to hurt them. Well, they don't like me, so I don't like them. Well, they don't want to speak to me. I'm not going to speak to them. Well, they don't come in and, and work and hug on me or they don't call on my name. So because they don't call on my name, I'm not going to call on their name. You know, we can't become those type of people. <laughs> That's why we need to deliverance. That's why the church need deliverance. Amen. Um, we want to make sure that the love walk isn't affa- affected or tainted in any way by the things that we have been through. And I want to get right back into this particular position and we're going to wrap up here. Listen, the word of God, it reminds us, we talk about the, uh, the scripture in uh, Luke eight, the second chapter it says, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. We know this to be true because the Bible shows us even now when we have picked up one situation, that thing it came back stronger. So it was seven more demons that has attached itself to that one thing that we started off with. I know the woman of God mentioned uh, last week, uh, I'm sorry, Sunday, she mentioned um, that, you know, after she uh, was going through that divorce process and how ugly it got, you know, she then picked up another thing. She picked up drinking. And so that led to other things. And so this is why it's important for us to eliminate everything because the enemy will try to do his very best to make habitat. He comes and try to reside in certain areas of our lives, he attaches to certain things of our lives. So what the enemy did in her particular situation was he attached himself onto the divorce. And then from there, he began to allow that other spirit to come in. The, he got back seven more demons and she just named one, but there were probably more. That's with all of us. All of us are in situations where we have to understand the importance of deliverance because we need the, the deliverance so that we can make sure and ensure Hollywood 
hallelujah. We can make sure that we are, don't give the enemy any room or any power or any authority over our life. So if we elim eliminate that thing in such a way where there are no remains at all, there's nothing that the enemy can hold on to. And so this is why it is important to get delivered from that. Many of us, we have seen what people said they have been delivered from, um, delivered from some things, but yet they will still talk about the person and what they did. Let me tell you what deliverance does. Deliverance will literally make you feel like you, um, can't even, um, uh, um, think, remember things. I'm telling you, like deliverance in in the way, like you can't even remember negative negativity because true deliverance will literally eliminate it, um, all of those things, all of those issues, all of those that filled, all of those things that connected itself with it. True deliverance makes you be like, yeah, I know how I felt in that moment, moment, but I bless God. It's always positivity coming back. So if you're not delivered from your child's father or your um your child's mother or you know exes, if you're not delivered from those things and you're still coming back about how they are, always painting a bad picture about that individual, um, that is a, a, you know, that is probably um, a, a, a recognition right there that you should identify that maybe I'm just not delivered from this situation or for that particular person. Um, because, you know, even with God, even the grace of God, even the love of God doesn't even take us back to a place that we were in 10 years ago. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because every day I die daily. I die daily. So this is why it's important for us to get to that place where we understand that. And then with deliverance, understanding that as the enemy tries to hold on to those certain areas of our life, remember, as the man of God, I believe, um, uh, Deacon Spurgeon, he mentioned this. He says that, listen, that we have to fall back in love with God. We have to go back to the first love of our life. We have to get to a back to a place of worship. How does worship look like with, the, with God? Well, we know that in our worship with God, oh my goodness, in our worship with God, that the enemy does not dwell there. He can't come there. He doesn't have any access to that worship time with God. He doesn't. Because remember what I said in the beginning, he does not, he cannot stand the presence of the Lord. So because if you are always in the presence of the Lord, guess what? The enemy is not going to show up there because he does not like it. He can't stand to be there he does not want the glorification to go to God he wants it for himself remember that it's all about him and not about God so he's gonna watch you on the outside but while you're going in he ain't gonna mess with you he's like oh no that's why we got to get worship God in spirit and in truth we got to get in the spirit of God as we're worshiping God amen amen so we're gonna wrap this right up amen wrap this up I want to leave us with this particular uh passage here um well what we learn and what we know here let's wrap it up because time sake here pastor Corey has already uh, put some information on the screen for me so that we know that it's time to wrap up amen so what we know uh, from the word of god is um that sin Sin will allow itself, allow the enemy, allow those demons to come into our life. And I know that um, we struggle, we have issues. And one of the, the issues that came up is that, um, you know, you don't let nobody tell you you've been born and shaped in this. The Bible talks about how we have been born and shaped and we've been fashioned into sin. We've been fashioned into certain things from the enemy. But just because we've been fashioned into those things doesn't make us that, those things don't make us who we are. So we might have um, sinful tendencies or um, we may be in a, a sinful, like, be bound or in bondage by sin, but this is why we have to um, eliminate the sin in our life because as believers, we're, we don't have a sinful nature. That's why we're not considered to be sinners. But if we walk in the sinful nature, we're, what makes us different from those that are sinners and those that are believers? You got to get rid of the sin in your life. And by getting rid of that sin in your life, is going to make you different. It's going to allow the enemy to know just how author the authority that you walk in and the power that you have but any glimpse any bit of sin in your life the bible says in first john 3 and 8 as we're closing he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning we are not sinners we are not of the devil we are of god so if yes we fall short of the glory of god but we are we have a repentive state of mind and being so we're repenting for everything that we do 
do, but that does not make us those things. So if we are born in fashion, know that the enemy is going to hold on to those generational curses, those things. But if it's, excuse me, if it was financial, if it was, um, relationships, if it was lesbianism or homosexuality, whatever those issues are, those tendencies that were in the family that was formed in the womb, remember those things right there, the Bible says it's going to happen. So you're going to have tendencies of a lot of things because you were born and shaping into sin. So you were fashioned, that is, into sin. So that doesn't mean you got to put it on. Hallelujah. You don't have to put on that sin. Just know you were formed and shaping in it. And every time a tendency come up and, the, and it tries to make you be in bondage of that thing, you now you know you have the power to exercise your will that you have. You do have a will. Exercise your will. Repent, rebuke the enemy, and praise God for the deliverance. So let's thank God for the word of God. Hallelujah. I pray to God that this has been a blessing for you as it has been for me. My sisters, I would have loved to have had them come on and actually join us tonight. Um, but with technical difficulties, we couldn't make it happen tonight. But listen, I'm telling you, the women, they have been in here. Um, they are praying with you. We are praying with them and we're covering them in the spirit because we know the enemy will try to come back and trick us with some other things. But we bless God, truly, truly, truly bless God for what he is doing. So let's 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 do this. This is an opportunity now. Um, we're, we have two ways of giving by uh, Cash App and PayPal as well. Those are two forms of giving. So feel free to uh, use this opportunity now to uh, give. And uh, while you are giving and so and see, what we do here is um, we're trying our very best to reach our community in Ebor City. And I know they talk about Ebor City, they talk about the community, they talk about the people in there, but there's a reason why God has us there. And we are going to, we are excited to do the work that God has called us to do. So why don't you go in partnership with us and uh, use this opportunity now for your giving for those that would like to give tonight. And at the same time, again, I I pray that this was a blessing to you. I'm so excited with what God is doing. And I'm telling you, please keep Sister Katrina, Sister Amy, Sister Tawana, Sister Katanya, Sister Mariah in your prayers. I'm excited for what God is doing. And let us go ahead now in prayer. Hallelujah. Let's, let's free our hearts. Let's free our minds. And let's just let God have his way as we release unto him things that we can no longer control. Hallelujah. Father, we come before your presence, God, humbly. We thank you now, Father, for the opportunity, God, to render unto you, God, what is due. We honor you, God. We appreciate you, God. Oh, God, we count it a privilege to even be in the midst of you, God. We thank you now for exposing things that we that the enemy has tried to hide himself um, in areas of our lives. And we know, Father, it didn't feel good being exposed. But we thank you, Lord, because your word teaches us that you are there with us, God, and you chastise those who you love. And I thank you because you haven't forgotten about us. You haven't neglected does. And God, you exposing just means that you want us closer to you. And so God, tonight, God, we make a declaration that whatever it is that we need to get rid of, whatever sin that has been holding us back from walking into covenant with you, God, we pray, God, on tonight that you will remove those things from us. And God, we pray, God, every area of our lives are being made new. God, we pray right now for borrow. We speak borrow. We speak new beginning. Somebody came here, God, to this Bible study, to the prayer line, God. Somebody came here, Father God, burdened. Somebody came here heavy. Somebody came here during Suicide Awareness Month, God, thinking about suicidal thoughts. But we pray against the hands of the enemy. There is somebody who is homosexual. There is somebody who is a lesbian. There is somebody who is in depression. There is somebody who is experiencing a divorce. There is somebody that is in valley of decision and does not know which way to go, what decision to make, God. There is somebody that is still struggling struggling from their past. There was somebody are still God having the abuse over their head. So God, tonight we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, by only your power, God, that you father God can de de deteriorate God things that try to uproot itself in our lives. God, only you father in the name of Jesus can change things around for us. Only you father God, what the enemy
enemy meant for our bad, God, you are meant it for our good. And so we pray on tonight in the name of Jesus, by your power, God, that you will begin to loose things from us, God, that has attached itself from to us, God, ever since our childhood, God. We pray now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would give us the ability and the authority, God, to walk away from things, God, that had us restricted, that had us contempted, God, that had us in a place, Father God, uh, uh, isolation, God, to take us away from those things, God. Whatever we got to do, God, of everything that has made us heavy, God, heavy, God, we realize that we cannot do it alone, but we need you, God. We need you, Father. So we pray, God, for the deliverance of your people. We pray now, Father, for the love that you would continue, God, to extend to us, your people. We thank you now because when we leave here, we don't leave here condemned, but we leave here in peace. We leave here light. We leave here, God, every trouble, every strain, everything that we've been holding on, trying to figure it out ourselves, that you will meet us where we are needed the most. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God for you joining in with us on tonight. We bless God for you. We love you all so much. Thank you so much for interacting with us tonight. Continue to keep us in your prayers. Uh, continue to pray for Pastor Corey and myself and uh, Alto Worship Center. There is a great work that we have to do in the city and we are ready and excited for his great work. So thank you so much. We love you all so much and uh, hope to see you on Sunday. <laughs>